Hey, it's Candace, and today I wanted to share with you the importance of reconciling your bank account. So let me know if you are here live. Do you reconcile your bank statements? And if not, say no. I'm here on the replay and you do or you don't. So if you're live, great. If not, this will be available for you here. So recently I was on, I went to a business training and I was sitting next to another entrepreneur and we, they found out I teach QuickBooks. And usually when somebody finds I teach QuickBooks, they have a question, just like probably you have questions too. And so um, it came up about reconciliations and it reminded me of exactly why I teach the importance of reconciliations. I call it, um, if you've ever been to one of my QuickBooks workshops, I typically call it my the check and balance system. And it's all about verifying that you did it accurately. So let me, actually, I have a little image right here. I want to talk about why you reconcile. Let me know, you know, I asked you, I see we have some live. Are you reconciling? Peggy said no, she's here live. The rest of you, let me know. Like this can be interactive, it's gonna be a little bit fun. Um, I wanna talk about why it's important because it's something that, you know, a lot of people ask me like, what's the one thing people, mistake people often make within QuickBooks? And it's this, that they don't reconcile or they don't know the importance of it. So this is what a reconciliation looks like, right? And let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. Oh, make it bigger. So when you, at the, you know, at the end of your, period of time, whether it's at the end of the month or mid month, you will get a statement from your bank. Now you might be getting it through like electronically and you have to go in and get it. Whatever it is, you need to be getting this. Okay. For Jared said for some accounts. So I'll tell why don't I tell you which accounts you need to be reconciled? Would that be helpful? So you need to be reconciling all of your bank accounts and all of your credit cards every month that are in your QuickBooks file. And then I recommend doing your loans uh, either quarterly or once a year. And do you know why it's important even to be reconciling your loans every single quarter or year? Anybody know that's here? It's because if you don't write, when, when you get your statement, it'll give you the breakdown of your principal and interest, right? So when we buy an asset, we depreciate it. So when we make our loan payment, typically it's not an expense to the business, but the interest is. So when you reconcile it, you know that you've split out your interest and principal accurately. My bank statement in QuickBooks is a mess, said Peggy. Started um, one and started a new one this year. Okay, so let's talk. So often what I hear people saying, and the, the person that I was sitting next to last week um, at this conference was like, I, do I need to reconcile? I don't even understand why it's important. I use bank feeds. Do I still need to reconcile? And what do you think my answer was? Anybody want to guess? Yes, you still need to reconcile because what a reconciliation does, I'll put this one back up, is it allows you to say, what did I enter into QuickBooks, right? What am I entering and what happened through my bank? Are they the same? Did I accidentally enter it on the wrong date? Did I accidentally enter it on the wrong amount or on the wrong credit card, right? So if you have multiple bank accounts or multiple credit cards, I've done this before, I've entered in the wrong transaction. Or if you're using bank feeds, what happens is you think, oh, I've, I've, you know, I just downloaded exactly what happened to the bank, everything's gonna be fine. And I'll show you if you're an online user and you come in here and you're looking at your bank feed, have you ever had a mistake happen? If you guys have been using QuickBooks for very long and you reconcile, you'll know they have. So sometimes what happens is something gets duplicated or it comes in a slightly different way and you add it. So when you're in here and you're working on your, so inside the banking, you're gonna, if you're using bank feeds, if you're an online user, you may be using your bank feeds. The thing about that though, is if you're just like adding, 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 and you're never verifying, you're assuming, which we know what happens, we make assumptions, uh, but you're not checking it. So it's what I call the check and balance. So what you wanna make sure you're doing is coming down here to accounting, go to reconcile. And what you're doing is you're verifying that everything matches. Okay. So you're coming in here and you're saying, 
whichever bank account it is that you've been entering your transactions on. You come in here, and this is another thing that the, the person that I was visiting with had as a mistake. And, and actually on our Confidence with QuickBooks call yesterday, we were doing an implementation call for our, uh, the, our January people that came through. You have a beginning date. So when you're looking at your statement, let me actually, uh, I'll just do this. This is a little sample statement that I pulled up. You're looking at two things. So the whole point of reconciling, the best way to do it is you have a beginning date, like when did it start? And then you have what's called a statement date. This is an example one that I pulled off the internet, but see here, it's September 21st is their statement date. Sometimes it's the last day of the month. Sometimes it's mid month. It can be random depending on your bank. So when you're coming in here and I'll show you guys on the desktop in a, in a few minutes, but what you want to do is you want to put in your ending balance. So on your bank statement, it will say, what is your beginning balance right here? See, this says beginning balance. In this example, it's 18,000. The ending balance and the ending balance. So you use the ending, the end statement date and the ending balance. So your beginning balance after you've reconciled the first time, the beginning, the, the ending balance will become the new beginning balance. If you've never reconciled, this will say zero and that's completely normal. Don't worry about it. You're just going to put in your ending. So I'm just going to put 4,000. This is just a uh, QuickBooks sample file, which I shared with you guys how you can get the test drive. Um, and then you're going to pick your date. So if it was, um, this would be in this example, it was September. So we'll just go to September, even though it's not the same amount, but yours would be. So let's just, I'll do it just so it makes sense. So 5,684.22, if that was the true, 5,684.22, I think that's what I said, on the date that it said, right? I'm just giving you an example. And then you click start. And what you're doing is you're saying, okay, what happened in my QuickBooks what happened in my business? I need to change it to a more current date because it's like a sample file that has nothing that far out. So hold on, we'll just do it as of March. You'll see your transactions populate in here. And with the QuickBooks Online, it will typically check mark these for you. But what you're doing is you're going, okay, this debit happened, make it match over here. And you go through and you check mark them, okay? Now, if you said to me, Candace, do I still need to do this because I reconcile um, handwritten, what do you think my answer would still be? Like, I reconcile with my bank statement outside of like what my checkbook said and what that, no, you need to actually do it in QuickBooks. So what happens is when you're in here, if you have not been reconciling and you can be honest and let us know in the chat, if this has been you, you'll notice you'll come in here and you might have like the same transaction twice. Like you might have a thousand dollar transfer twice and you're like, but we never really did that. So the point, hopefully this is really clear of reconciling is making sure that whatever happened in your bank is exactly what happened in QuickBooks. And then if you find that you've been making, you have mistakes in your QuickBooks file, which is common, you'll go, oh, I accidentally duplicated that or I added the wrong date or the wrong dollar amount. Um, and you can go in and you can start changing it. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat if you're here live. Does this inspire you to realize you need to be reconciling? That is my goal for today. Because if you haven't already filed your taxes, let me know below that too. Like, have you filed, filed, or still need to file? Let me know. We'll do one for that you filed, two if you still need to file your taxes. This is the key to making everything work when you go to see your tax professional. Making sure that you didn't do it right. Yes, said Jared. Okay, cool. So have you filed or have, give me a one if you filed, give me a two if you haven't. I just went to my tax appointment um, Earlier this week, I was like, oh, so nice to get that done. Um, I'll show you for the online users an example of your online. So for you to reconcile, you're going to go over here to the reconcile screen. And then you're going to have your beginning. You're going to pick your bank account. So these are my little samples I do for my trainings. Um, you're going to have what, what did you re reconcile last? What is the current statement date? And you'll have your beginning balance and then what is your new statement balance? And then you click continue and you go in and you start checking. You go in and you say, okay, this happened, this happened, you start check marking it. Now, I'll give you a huge tip. If you've been reconciling, but you have a lot of old stuff in your bank account, do you know what that means? You have mistakes. So you either doubled something up if you're doing your credit cards or your bank accounts and you have like a lot of that old junk in there, those are errors. And that means you need to go in and clean them up. And a lot of times the reason errors happen is because 
when you first started your QuickBooks or somebody else was using it, and maybe even now, you'll realize there was just things you didn't know how to enter. You didn't know how to do it properly, which is what causes the mistakes. Once you start learning how to do it right, you're like, oh yeah, that's what that mistake meant, but you didn't know that to begin with. I see too. So there's a lot of you that are still getting ready to file your taxes, which is completely normal. Um, if you guys are wanting help with your QuickBooks, we will be opening enrollment for Confidence with QuickBooks in a few weeks. So if you haven't already and you're like, I really want to learn the A to Z's, I want to know how to properly enter your transactions, I'd recommend jumping on the waiting list. And we also will be doing a workshop. Um, week in, a, in the next week or two, we'll be doing a workshop. I'm, th I'm trying to decide. I think it's the 16th is our first workshop. So if you've never joined our workshops before about learning how to customize QuickBooks, how to start getting where you can read your reports. So when you're in here, what I love to teach on my customizing workshop is how to go in and pull your profit and loss and how to start getting to when you're pulling your report, you can actually read and understand what it's saying. As well as I talk more about the check and balance system there too, about why it's so important to reconcile. You're here, so you're already getting a sneak peek of some of the things that are really important to know. But I give you the pillars of understanding the importance of your profit and loss and how to start designing it so you can actually read it for your business. Have any of you uh, already registered for the workshop? Let me know below. I will share with you. Um, you want, I can share with you how you can find out about it if you like. We'll be doing, you can go to candicecamper.com forward slash workshop and you can save your seat. It's a free workshop um, where we're going to talk about how to customize it, how to start looking at your chart of accounts, how to start pulling your reports and figuring out what's the best way for you to be entering your transactions to get the reports you want and to reckon the importance of reconciling. So we'll be talking about all of that and more. I did get a message recently from someone where I was talking about the importance of Checking, um, reconciling. And one of the questions came up that she shared, which I'll share with you this now too. You don't need to wait until all of your data is entered to reconcile. What I actually recommend doing is reconciling every single month to enter in your transactions, right? So you don't need to enter in the whole year and then reconcile. But before you go to your tax appointment, I would recommend, even if it means you have to put a little bit of an extension in there, if you don't get it done in time, is to go back and reconcile all of 2020, every single bank account, because you will most likely find you have some mistakes in there. And it will be the way you know you showed up to your appointment with confidence. Let me know, do you have any questions about today's topic? The importance of reconciling? Is there, uh, do you have any questions? Let me know. It takes a second for the, for the chat to show. But I'll make sure because I want to. I love to come in and ask answer questions. Yesterday we did our, like I said, our conference QuickBooks, and it a lot of it has to do with like, what do you do if you haven't reconciled before? I recommend going back if you have like really really old QuickBooks files with a lot of mistakes in them. You basically have two options. One is starting over. The other is you can add a new bank account and you can start entering in your data from there, so that you have. You basically can can start a fresh bank account so you don't have all the old stuff in there. Um, I, I love it when you clean it up, but if, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. There are a couple different ways you can do it. So I hope you enjoyed today's tip on why it's important to go in and reconcile. I can't wait. Let me know below. Like, are you going to go reconcile? So what do you need to reconcile? Basically, your QuickBooks file and your bank statements and deciding on when you want to start reconciling like from you can't start in like say December I'm going to reconcile like January of 2021 and then I'm going to go back and do 2020 in your bank account you can only move forward so ideally you go back and start in January 2020 and you'd move forward and you do one month at a time I can't emphasize that enough sometimes people are like I'm going to take a whole year and try to reconcile it that is not <laughs> it's not going to be very helpful for you so a better way to do it is to grab your January statement. It's gonna, and then you go through, let me see if I can find my little image again. So you grab your little statement and you're gonna enter in your, if you've never reconciled, your beginning balance can be zero. You're gonna enter in your ending balance. And then you're gonna go through and you're gonna go all of your checks, all of your deposits. Oh, and the most important part, let me show you something real fast before I go. It's good that we're doing a summary of this. So the most important part is when you're in here, you want to be making sure that you, your ending statement balance when you're in here and you're reconciling, most important part is this difference down here at the very bottom needs to be zero, okay? 
whether you're on the online or the desktop, you really need to make sure that your difference is zero. So like here, if there's a difference, that means there's a mistake. So what you do is you grab that statement and you look at the total, which I actually think it's a little bit hard to read. Hold on. Let me do a slightly different one. I want to make sure you can actually see it. So what I want you to do is if you if you notice the difference isn't zero and you think, well, but I'm checkmarked everything. I don't know what's wrong. What I want you to do is look at what you have as your ending date on either one. And then I want you to look at your beginning. And then I want you to look at what is your total check. So I'll click a couple here so you can see it. What was your total payments and what is your total deposits? And compare that to your statement. So see you have a beginning and ending, but then it also gives you your total credits and your total debits, right? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically make sure that those amounts match what your, your statement is. So if you find that you're a little bit off, then you'll know, you'll know where to start from there. And then the next thing is when you come in here and you start checking these off, if you have some transactions that aren't checkmarked and you're not sure why, then you're gonna wanna do the due diligence and start looking into learning more about like, where did that transaction come from? Those are the things that I like to teach inside confidence with QuickBooks. When you enter from your bank feeds, do you recommend the beginning when you reconcile or should you enter in the item? Do you enter in the bank fees? Okay, fees at the beginning or as an item? So the way I like to do bank fees is I enter them throughout the month, like as a normal transaction and then I just reconcile it. So in here, you can add your bank fees um, on the desktop version. Let me grab that up real quick so I can show you. On here, like when you're when you're entering it, you can add your bank fees. I don't personally like that, and I'll tell you why. You can't put a vendor. So if you ever wanna go back and like look up your vendors, you can't do it easily. You know, if you wanna go in and like look up the, everything comes down to the way you enter your transactions is the detail you're going to have later, right? So I like to enter, I would like to enter in my bank fee as in the right check screen or in the check register to go to the vendor and to the expense category so that I have the data later if I want to look it up. Does that answer your question, Jared? Let me know. All right. I think that's all the questions that we had for today, which is exciting. I will come back and look and see if you guys added any questions later. Let me know, was this helpful? I have a whole list of ideas, of videos I've been inspired recently by questions that I've received that I wanna do. Um, let me know, would you guys like some more videos? One of the topics um, that I'm interested in, and you can let me know if this is something you'd like to learn about, is I've been getting a lot of people who are newer to starting to track their books, and they're like, I don't even know where to start. Like, I have an Excel spreadsheet, I'm not sure where to track. Would that be helpful, whether you're using Excel spreadsheet or QuickBooks? in what you want to track. Let me know. Is this a topic that you're interested in? Um, say how, so what, what that is that I would be teaching is like, how do you decide what income and expense? I'll give away some of the secrets, but like, what are the income and expense that you would need? Would that be helpful? Like, um, just getting started with bookkeeping. Like what is some of the things you need to know for your business? You're welcome. Jared said, yes, let me know. Um, I would like to come in and start doing more live video trainings with you guys. If that's something you'd like, let me know. And if you haven't already, make sure you join us on our workshop right now. Registration is open at candiscamper.com forward slash workshop. We'll also put a link in later here. You guys can check it out. Um, but I, if you're ready to get your QuickBooks figured out and get to your next tax point with confidence, make sure you check it out. And if you're wanting help um, with your QuickBooks, you can also join confidencewithquickbooks.com if you've been waiting for our training. We only open enrollment a couple times a year. so.